called people like Martin Luther King, who just got a Nobel Peace Prize, uh, an Uncle Tom. Is this correct, first? Well, I'd rather say that uh, in the States, there's a law that has recently been passed or a decision handed down by the court wherein if you call someone an Uncle Tom, they can sue you for libel. Well, so I never refer to them as Uncle Tom's. I would say that Uncle Martin is my friend. Uncle Martin is your friend, yet you would disagree with his uh, approach to what he wants to accomplish. Definitely. If his approach would bring about uh, what the black man in America needs to completely eliminate the problem that we have, I would say well and good. But I very much doubt that uh, anyone who uh, adopts the approach that Martin Luther King has been teaching to our people in that country can point to any meaningful gains that has actually served to solve the problem. Black Muslims uh, have sometimes, whether you have or not, and I think probably you have, have sometimes, it seemed to me, been preaching hate to meet hate. Uh, I don't advocate any kind of hate. But there's a lot that, of talk that sounds very much like it. No, I think that the guilt complex of the American white man is so profound until when you begin to analyze the real condition of the black man in America, instead of the American white man eliminating the causes that create that condition, he tries to cover it up by accusing his accusers of teaching hate. But actually, they're just exposing him for being responsible for what exists. <clears throat> well, that's, that's uh, something of, of an argument. But I've heard speeches made by some of the people of your group. I think I've heard you make speeches. It seemed to me that you were advocating uh, what I would have to describe, I think, as violence to meet the serious injuries that have been done your people, with which I totally agree. I don't call that violence. Uh, I don't in any way encourage black people to go out and initiate acts of aggression indiscriminately against whites. But I do believe that the black man in the United States and any human being anywhere is well within his right to do whatever is necessary by any means necessary to protect his life and property, especially in a in a country where the federal government itself has proven that it is either uh, in, unable or unwilling to protect the lives and property of those human beings. Just before Pierre takes it, you've got a pretty good fighter and the world's heavyweight champion lined up with you to help out. Yes, Pierre. <laughs> well, Mr. X, if I guess I call you that, is that a proper uh, appellation, yes. Mr. X? I I'm wondering if you still believe, as I think you certainly did at you know, the time you were allied to the black Muslim movement, in a segregated black nation no. in North America. I don't believe in any form of segregation or any form of racism. Uh, I'm against any form of segregation and against racism. Is it, uh, am I right in saying that the black Muslim movement, which you have left, did believe in that? Well, Elijah Muhammad taught his followers that the only solution was a separate state yeah. for black people. And as long as I thought he genuinely believed that himself, uh, I believed in him and believed in his solution. But when I began to doubt that he himself believed that that was feasible, and I saw no kind of action designed to bring it into existence or bring it about, then uh, I turned in a different direction. Are you still a Muslim yourself? Oh, yes. I'm You're a Muslim. I believe in the religion of Islam, which believes in brotherhood, complete brotherhood of all people. But at the same time that I believe in this brotherhood, I don't believe in forcing my uh, desire for brotherhood upon those who aren't willing to accept it. Of course, I think the Christians would say that they also believed in brotherhood. What did you say to that? I'd say they believe in it, but don't practice it. <laughs> That'd be a pretty good answer. <laughs> Sir, when the uh, muezzin goes up in the minaret twice a day, he cries to the world, there is but one God, and he is Allah. Do you deny that there is a Christian God? Uh, the muezzin does this five times a day. Five times, and I only heard him twice. Well, you were fortunate to hear him twice. <laughs> but he does this five times a day, and the same God that he says uh, that he expresses the existence of is the God that the Christians profess to believe in themselves, and the God that the Jews believe in, one God, the creator of the universe. The Muslims believe in the God that created the universe, and I think the Christians do, and the Jews do. Now, as long as all of them are talking about the creator, uh, the Jews may call him Jehovah, and Christians may have another name for him. Those who are Arabic-speaking refer to him as Allah. Well, we believe in the same God. Now, as the Muslim religion advances in the United States, are you uh, modernizing it or, or sticking with the old faiths? For example, the complete segregation of the sexes. I think that everything today on this earth is being modernized. Uh, religious uh, principles and practices, as well as political and other, and other things. Now, when you went to Mecca, this is a very sacred and forbidden city. I tried to get to Mecca myself and certainly didn't make it. 
uh, not being a Muslim, but how would they accept you as one? You're an American. There are few American Muslims. This is true, and by being an American and not having uh, any, not being able to speak the Arabic language, I did strike a snag, a very serious snag, but I was fortunate uh, to have been pretty well known by the officials in Arabia, and they knew, too, that I had uh, accepted Orthodox Islam. It had been highly publicized in the paper, and I w became a guest of the state. I was a guest of who? Of Prince Faisal, the present King Faisal. Faisal, And they made it possible for me to go before the committee, Hajj committee or Hajj court, who examines you and, and asks you questions about your belief, and if you pass it, then you are okay to go to Mecca. But it's you would true. have to have a translator then. Uh, oh, I had one. Then we are realizing that our problem in America, that we are black Americans and we have a problem that goes beyond religion. We formed a group known as the Organization of Afro-American Unity. And the objective of this organization, it's non-religious, number one, any Negro can belong to it. And the objective of, the, of that organization is to uh, bring about a condition that will guarantee respect and recognition of the 22 million black Americans as human beings. We feel that the problem, number one, of the black man in America is beyond America's ability to solve. It's a human problem, not an American problem or a Negro problem. And as a human problem or a world problem, we feel that it should be taken out of the jurisdiction of the United States government and the United States courts and taken into the United Nations in the same manner that the problems of the black man in South Africa, Angola, and other parts of the world, and even the way they're trying to bring the problems of the Jews in Russia into the United Nations because of violation of human rights. We believe that our problem is one not a violation of civil rights, but a violation of human rights. Not only are we denied the right to be a citizen in the United States, we're denied the right to be a human being.